Sports Radio 1560, The Fan. You can be a part of the conversation at 321-984-1234. Now, here's your host, Mark Moses. Good afternoon and welcome. Welcome indeed to Monday edition of the Mark Moses Show, only right here on Sports Radio 1560, The Fan. Hope you had a great weekend. I know I did. Watching football for 48 straight hours. But yes, we are back to the grind, my friend. We got a recap. Oh, and there's much to discuss. Let's start with this. Uh, The Miami Dolphins played one of the craziest games I think I've ever seen. Where they lost in overtime to the Las Vegas, that's right, Las Vegas Raiders by a field goal. That game took, what, like four hours, four and a half hours? How long did that take exactly? Dolphins had so many chances to win that football game and couldn't get it done. But I will say this here on a Monday. As a armchair quarterback, they put up a hell of a fight. They really did. They really put up a fight compared to last week at this time. We were on the air last Monday ripping the Dolphins apart for what did they lose? Like 25 nothing? They didn't score a point yes last week at home. And yesterday they come back and they put up a fight, lose by a field goal at the end of overtime. Hey, I'll give it. I'll give them credit. I will. And Jacoby Brissett, a backup. Played the game of his life, and he almost got it done. You think about the plays he made in this game. Where, with about two seconds ago, he dives for the end zone at the end of regulation. And gets them within two. If he gets tackled or stuffed, the game is over. This guy has no wheels on him. No jets. And he got to the end zone, and he scored. He did. Give credit to Jacoby on that play. Then the two-point conversion, he he hits Fuller on the left side of the end zone. We're going to overtime. Then in overtime, the Raiders get the ball first. They hit a field goal. Dolphins have fourth and 20. And he hits the tight end, Gesicki, down the field for a first down. Fourth and 20. He's not Aaron Rodgers. He's not Tom Brady. He's not even Matthew Stafford. Fourth and 20, and he converts the play. Then, I'm sorry, I have to start my show with this. I have to do it. There is a play in overtime when Jacoby Brissett is in the pocket and throws a bomb to the end zone. A a haymaker-type throw where he's like, you know what, we're going to knock you out right now and we're going to win this football game. A beautiful pass, a beautiful dime, if you want to call it. Right in the hands of his receiver, you couldn't throw it any better. And on the play, it goes through Fuller's arms. I'm sorry, I'm going to call it the refs. That was pass interference in the end zone. That should have been first and goal at the one with the Dolphins having an easy chance to score a touchdown and winning that game there in Vegas. They should have thrown the flag. And I get it. In those situations... You don't want the referees deciding the game. I get it. Referees don't want to do that. Don't blame them. But I think you have to throw the flag there. And even if you're not going to throw the flag, that ball should have been caught by Fuller. And I think that's his MO most of his career. Great speed, can make some plays, but doesn't make the big play when you need it. That should have been a catch. That should have been a touchdown or at least a flag for the Dolphins to have first and goal at the one-yard line with a chance to win. So he drops it. No flag. And then on the same drive, they're down three in overtime. And it's, what, fourth and two at midfield? And then they decide, ah, you know, we're going to kick the field goal. We're going to do that. We're going to go for the tie. And and maybe, I don't know, we could tie them. Or or maybe the Raiders make a mistake. I Look, again, Jacoby Brissett is scoring on fourth down. Then they're co- converting a two-point conversion. Then he's he's converting fourth and 20. What do you have to lose? 
You have one playoff appearance in a decade. You have zero playoff wins in 20 years. What do you have to lose? I, I would have, and I know this is like woulda, coulda, shoulda. I would have gone for it on fourth and two in overtime. Who cares? We're probably going to lose this game anyway. Just keep going for it. You keep making every crazy play. What's one more? No, they decide to go for the field goal. They do hit it. Tie game. Raiders go down the field, and and uh, Derek Carr was incredible on that final drive to set up the game-winning field goal. He had some plays where the Raiders are three and zero now. I, he needs MVP consideration. I'm not kidding around. Derek Carr has played that well, and they're leading that division now. But this is my thing. What do you have to lose on the play? Just go for it. You can't play to tie. I know I sound like Herm Edwards after a while when I say this. You play to win the game. The Dolphins going for that scaredy cat field goal in overtime shows they didn't try to win the game. They didn't try to win. The Raiders got the ball. They said, we're going to go try to win this football game. We're getting the ball last. We're going to try it. That's the difference. I get it. You have your timeouts. Maybe you thought you can shut them down. I say go for it. You're now one and two. You got the Colts coming up at home on Sunday. Brissett's going to start again because we got the news. Was it Saturday afternoon that two is going to be out for a couple weeks? What a shocker. He's always out for a couple weeks. And now, and now, it's the Brissett show. It was, and he played great. I think he played great despite his coaching, where the coaching staff still not sure what this offense is going to be. Right? And why... Here's my thing. Why is Fuller the deep man on that play? You drafted Jalen Waddell in the top 10. He is a guy that's supposed to stretch the field and be a deep threat. Why are you going for five-yard passes with Jalen Waddell? I don't understand. Why are you going for that? Why aren't you throwing Waddell to the end zone and throwing a bomb to him? Why aren't you doing that? I, I don't get it after a while. I don't. It just, it makes no sense after a while. It doesn't. Now you're one and two. Here's my question. Some of those plays that Brissett was making were the plays that Fitzmagic were making last year, where he's in the pocket and he's stretching the field and he's going with the deep ball. Can Tua make those plays? That's what I kept thinking about yesterday with the Miami Dolphins. They're moving the ball up and down the field. They were. I don't, I still think the run game is trash. But if Tua's under center, does he complete the fourth down play into the end zone to get the touchdown? Does he convert the two-point conversion? Does he convert fourth and 20? Does he try to hit Fuller deep down the field into the end zone? Does he? No, he doesn't. That's why I'm like, I'm still like, this is not good if you're the Miami Dolphins. And I know if you're a Dolphins fan listening, I know you're watching what the San Diego slash LA Chargers are doing right now. I know you are because you're looking at Herbert. He's making plays in the pocket. He looks like he's going to be a stud in the AFC for the next 10 years. And you're not even sure if you're a Dolphins fan who your starting quarterback is moving forward. That's the truth. If we're going to be honest, that's the truth at this hour. Sorry, that's how we need to roll. So that's the Dolphins. An exciting game, and honestly, if I'm Roger Goodell, I'd have Dolphins at Raiders every single year moving forward. Because the game two years ago was nuts. Where Raiders thought they won, like, what, with a minute to go? And then Ryan Fitzpatrick gets the ball and somehow miraculously gets them into field goal range, and then they win. That's how crazy that is. I say let them play every single year because it feels like it's the game of the year in the NFL every time I see it. So that's the Dolphins. Then, then, you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers go to L.A. and take on the Rams. And this was a a really put-up-or-shut-up game for the L.A. Rams. They came to play. They took it to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and that was the first loss. Was it 34-24? That is the first loss for the Buccaneers in about, hmm, since last November. 
They had won like 10 in a row, including their Super Bowl championship. That was a huge win for the LA Rams. And I'm going to tell you something right now if you're a Buccaneers fan. And I know you don't want to hear this. This is very true. It's a good loss. I know you don't want to lose. It's a good loss for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They put up a fight, but on the road, they got tested. They got punched in the face. I think this is perfect for them right now. I think this is a game that kind of shows like, all right, you can get off your high horse. You could stop watching the Disney movie. You could stop saying how great you are. This is a good loss for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They got kicked in the head. Their defense looked like it finally got exposed. Something that's been simmering now for a couple weeks. That's a good loss by the Buccaneers. I think it's good. Get kicked in the head once in a while. Because then you get angry and you get motivated if you're Tampa Bay. And they do have problems on defense. And I know the fan base, everyone I, I talk to talks about, oh, there's injuries in the secondary. There's this. No, the defense has not played well. And if you go back to week one, the Cowboys should have beaten the Buccaneers. But Brady went down the field, hit a field goal. They won. Week two, it was a one possession game going into the fourth quarter. And then the Falcons with Matt Ryan threw two different horrible backbreaking interceptions, including a pick six. There is a, a thing here where the Bucs are two and one. They could be one and two. They could be 0 oh and three. They should be happy that they're two and one. That was a tough game, but I think it's good this time of year. It's early and it's going to be a long season. You can call me crazy. That was a good kick in the mouth, punch in the face, in the gut, wherever you want to say the violence goes to your body. They needed that because now they can get off their high horse. They can go back to the drawing board, and then get motivated, and then get angry. And now <laughs> uh, there's a big game coming up on Sunday. Yeah, I know a lot of like college football experts, and we're going to talk about it all week, talk about all these great games coming up this weekend. In college football, where it's like, especially in the SEC, where you got Arkansas and Georgia, Ole Miss and Alabama, Cincinnati, Notre Dame up north. There's a lot of good games. Uh, There's a game coming up, I believe on Sunday night in Foxborough. And we've been circling it for how many months now? Uh, Yeah, Tom Brady's going back to New England for that game. And I know the Patriots have not looked good so far. I mean, they're not as bad as my Bears. But, uh, yeah, they've not looked good over the last couple weeks. I know, and you know, that Belichick's going to be ready for Tom Brady. Even though I think Tampa Bay is going to win this game by double digits. And I think Brady's going to make a statement. And I feel like Tampa Bay is going to get back on track, go to 3-1. and one. But I think we're going to get a ball game there, and it's going to be interesting in that first half. And you know it's going to be emotional for Tom Brady. The guy spent almost two decades there. He won six Super Bowls there. That's his team. When he goes into the Hall of Fame, he will say he's a New England Patriot. Even though he won the Super Bowl with Tampa Bay, he's a Patriot through and through. It's going to be a big moment for Tom Brady. And I bet, you know, pregame, They're going to cheer Brady. They will. Until we kick the ball off. And when Brady's in that pocket, you know, the Patriots fans, they don't want to injure Brady. But they want to beat Brady. He plays for the Buccaneers. So it's, you know, last last couple days have been great. This weekend's going to be even more awesome as we go in October. It really is. And my question is, and we can look at the schedule. Who wins a game first? The Florida State Seminoles or the Jacksonville Jaguars? Who wins the game first? I don't know when Florida State's going to win. I know they got Syracuse. Do they beat Syracuse? Are you sure? They couldn't beat Jacksonville State or Wake Forest or Louisville. They couldn't beat any of those teams. Jacksonville, they're losing in the division, out of the division. They just... They had a 19-14 lead, and then it was all downhill from there against Arizona. Who wins the game first in the state of Florida? Is it Florida State or is it the Jacksonville Jaguars? 
This is where it's like, are you a betting man? If you had to put money on this, who wins the game first? Who does it? Is it Florida State? Like, I like, I'm I've been thinking about the question for the last couple of hours, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna bring this up. I'm gonna bring this up when I start the show today. And even when I said it out loud, I'm still not sure what the answer is. I think it's Florida State. Or is it Jacksonville? Ugh. Not good. No. And I'll end with this for my open. And then in about five minutes, Eric Lopez is going to join us. Big Dolphins fan. We're really going to hammer down what happened yesterday. It was a great game. It was. Um, so I was talking about this last week where, so downtown, there is a country bar. I'll give him credit. Hurricane Creek. And they have like this like big Cleveland Browns following. And the owner, Randy, who I know does a great job. He like sent me a video. He's like, Mark, look at this Cleveland Browns watch party we're getting downtown. Like I know there's establishments here where it's like, oh, this is the cowboy bar. Oh, this is where all the Pittsburgh Steeler fans go. Like, yeah, I know. I get it. But that's anywhere. He's like, yeah, we have like a Cleveland Browns following. And I was like, well, they're going to take on my Bears. It'd be fun if I went to the game and cheered on my Bears and I'd be going against like 30 different Browns fans. And I don't know what it was. I I don't know if I have superpowers or if I'm secretly a witch. I don't know. But at the last minute, I'm like, Mark, don't go. What if your team gets embarrassed horribly? Maybe you shouldn't be in public for this. Maybe you shouldn't do that. And I don't know why. Maybe it was like, you know, like Bill and Ted, where they're like, hey, don't forget, we need to plant this in the past. Don't forget, we got to go in the past. I think I seriously got in the phone booth at 7 o'clock last night, went back in time, and told myself, don't go to a restaurant or sports bar. Your bears are going to be so terrible You shouldn't be in public to see it so people can make fun of you. So thank you, future self, for saving me from that horrible embarrassment. That's right. That's how we roll. There are days like yesterday where I'm really jealous of the people that don't follow sports. You know the type where they're just like, you know, me and the wife going to the farmer's market. And then, you know, we might go to a movie or you know what? I think we're going to go for a jog and, and then maybe I'll read some of my, I don't know, Tom Clancy book. And you know, we'll, we'll meet some neighbors and we'll play some music. We'll very nice time. Like sometimes I'm jealous of those people because I'm so emotionally invested in my football team on Saturdays and Sundays that it just ruins everything when your team, it's like, they don't even show up. It's like they went to the stadium, pulled their pants down, took a crap on the 50-yard line, and they just left. Sorry, guys. We got to leave. That's I'm sorry to be that graphic, but that's what it felt like yesterday. It was awful. Awful. The Dolphins did not score a point in their home opener against the Buffalo Bills, and I thought that was the worst thing I've seen. No. No. Matt Nagy showed you. So bad. It's so bad. It it's literally July and August is for hope and expectations when it comes to your football team. And you're like, you know what? We got some pieces here. You know, we added some guys in free agency. And, you know, I like some of our draft picks. And, you know, maybe this is the year we turn it around. That's what July and August is, where you're in training camp and you're having preseason games. You're like, you know what? Maybe we're gonna have a good team this year. And then September hits. You know what September is? September's reality for your football team. That's what it is. It's reality. And by the end of September, you're like, oh, that's right. We're going to suck again. Yeah, this is not good. Okay, how's my basketball team going to be this year? That's literally what happens. July, August is hope and expectations. And you're like, yeah, we got a chance this year. And then by the end of September, which is going on right now, you're like, oh, that's right. We're terrible again. It's going to be a long fall going into the winter. 
That's right. And that's what happened to me yesterday. Go team, go. Let's go to break. We'll come back. Yes, Eric Lopez will join us next. We'll get his thoughts on the Dolphins. Was that pass interference? We'll break it down next. <laughs> 